So what are the different types of junctional rhythms? There are three types of junctional rhythm. A regular junctional rhythm, an accelerated junctional rhythm, and a junctional tachycardia. A junctional rhythm has a rate of 40 to 60 beats a minute and is the rate is regular. The P wave in a junctional rhythm is either absent, inverted or buried in the QRS. The PR interval is less than 0 0.12 seconds and QRS is less than 0 0.12 seconds. The second rhythm is the accelerated junctional rhythm. The difference between the junctional rhythm and the accelerated rhythm is that of the rate only. The rate here is 60 to 100. And the third one is junctional tachycardia where the rate is more than 100. These are the different types of junctional rhythms. This one, the one on the top and this one have absent P wave and the rate is regular between 40 to 60. Here the P wave is inverted with the regular rate and this one the rate is more than 60 so is accelerated junctional rhythm. But the rate is regular but the P wave is absent here. Then comes the junctional tachycardia and this is nodal or junctional tachycardia where the rate is more than 100. The next topic is AV nodal blocks. The three types of the AV nodal blocks, the first degree, second degree and a third degree block. In a first degree block, what happens in first degree block, there is prolonged PR interval. See that P and R interval is prolonged. The rhythm is regular and QRS is usually normal. Is one more. That's a prolonged PR interval. The second degree block, in the first degree block, the, there is no QRS drop. If the QRS is wide, then it means it's a distal block. And if the QRS is narrow, then it's a proximal block that is in the AV node or in the bundle. And the rate is fast. The heart rate is fast in case of a narrow QRS. So what is the site of block in a first degree block? The site of block is usually in the AV node but it may also occur in atria, bundle of his and the Purkinje tissues. In a second degree block, not all impulses reach the ventricles. Therefore, there is a 2 is to 1 or a 3 is to 1 block. There are two types of the second degree block, Mobitz type 1 or Wenkebex and a Mobitz type 2 block. So what's the difference between Mobitz type 1 and Mobitz type 2? In Mobitz type 1, there is a progressively increasing PR interval. See here, this compared to this one, this increasing PR interval, and then there is a drop beat. There is one P, and there is QRS missing. So the Q, so once the QRS is missing, the rate is irregular compared to the type 1 block where the rate was regular and QRS was present. Here the QRS is missing and the rate is irregular. And this is worsened by the carotid sinus massage but it responds to atropine. This is also Mobitz type 1. Here is the missing QRS and this is progressively P increasing PR interval here. See, these are the ECGs for the type 1. This ECG shows a second degree heart block, Mobitz type 1 with progressively increasing PR interval. But then there is a Q 
QRS missing as well as a P wave is missing. So this is an example of the type in second degree block where the P wave is also missing along with a QRS complex. Then in type 2 second degree hard block there is a fixed PR interval with a sudden drop of QRS. So this is the difference between the type 1 and type 2. Here it is. The PR interval is prolonged but fixed and then there is a miss QRS. Atrial rate is regular and the ventricular rate is irregular because the QRS is missing. So the ventricular rate is irregular. This is another one second degree block type 2 fixed PR interval and a sudden drop of the QRS. In Mobitz type 2 block the QRS is abnormal and it occurs in distal or infra his bundle conduction system and is often associated with a bundle branch block. The duration of the QRS complex helps to determine the level of the block because it's a wide in the distal block. So the treatment of the block, the physiological treatment, what's the physiological? Wagle stimulation and carotid sinus massage. Where does it act? It acts the, uh, it slows the conduction in the AV knot but has less effect on infranodal tissues. Number two, the drugs, atropine and isoproterenol, and also the exercise. They improve the conduction through the AV node, but impairs the conduction through the infranodal tissue. So, vagal stimulation, carotid massage, atropine, isoproterenol, and exercise. All of them act on the AV node. The AV vagal stimulation and carotid massage slow the conduction at the AV node, whereas atropine, isoprotonol and exercise increase the conduction through the AV node. But all of these vagal stimulation, carotid massage, atropine, isoprotonol and exercise, they have very little or no effect on conduction through the infranodal tissues. What is the effect of exercise on a block in relation to the QRS complex? With a narrow QRS complex in congenital heart blocks, exercise increases the heart rate. Whereas with a wide QRS complex, in acquired heart blocks, exercise does not increase the heart rate. So with narrow congenital con QRS with congenital heart, exercise increase the heart rate and with wide QRS in acquired condition, exercise does not increase the heart rate. Then a third degree heart block also known as stroke Adams attack. There is atria and ventricle they beat of their own. So there's the extreme dizziness, hypertension and syncope and altered mental status. This usually occurs in septal MI or when there is damage to the bundle of his. And the treatment is that of the permanent pacemaker. Here is the third degree heart block, see the atria ventricle be beating of their own and then there's a wide QRS complex the heart rate is slow this is third degree heart block you can see all these ECGs and the next is atrioventricular nodal reentrant tachycardia so what's AVNRT this is actually a nodal arrhythmia AV nodal arrhythmia, but there is supraventricular tachycardia. This is atrial tachycardia. They have it here. 
but the pathology is in the AV node. And this is the most frequently occurring form of the regular tachycardia, more in females, female affected three times more than males. And there is a fast paced heart rate. The rhythm is regular and it's about 180 to 250 beats a minute. It has a re-entry circuit or circus pathway. This is a condition which occurs in the two electrical pathway occurs. One is slow and the other, other is fast. They go around the ring and they cancel each other when they meet. But if there is a block, they don't cancel and they, that results in a uh, rhythm abnormality. So what happens normally in a depolarization of a ring of cardiac muscle, the impulse spreads in both direction. And when they meet, they cancel each other. But when there is a block, they don't cancel each other, producing arrhythmia. And in nodal tissue, this makes a circus movement and re-enters the atria, leads to paroxysmal nodal atrial tachycardia. There it is. So AVNRT is the most common paroxysmal regular supraventricular tachycardia. So remember it's a regular supraventricular tachycardia and what is the cause of AVNRT? It occurs in the absence of structural heart diseases. And why does it occur? It develops because of the two electrophysiologically distinct pathways for conduction in the complex, slow and fast, in the complex sensitium of the muscle fibers that make up that make up the AV node. And what's a retrograde block? This is the second type of block. When there is a block in the bundle of his, the portion below the block is not depolarized by anterograde impulse, but it's depolarized by a retrograde impulse. The impulse go around the block and then it depolarizes the portion below the block. When this portion is depolarized, the area above the block is then not refractory and the impulse re-enters by retrograde conduction into the atria, resulting in a re-entry retrograde conduction by atrial echo beat. So what, how about the ECG in the AVNRT? It has a long PR interval narrow QRS complexes, tachycardia rate of 150 to 250 beats a minute, P wave is frequently buried in QRS and gives a negative deflection and that is due to the retrograde atrial depolarization. So what's the treatment of nodal reentry tachycardia? Number one physiological AV nodal vagal stimulation with well selva maneuver or carotid sinus massage. Number two drugs, ABCD, adenosine, beta blockers, calcium blockers, and digitalis. And number three, surgical treatment, permanent treatment with catheter ablation. So the next topic is idioventricular rhythm. What is the idioventricular rhythm? When the connection from atria to the ventricle is completely interrupted or if both SA nodes and AV nodes are knocked down, then ventricle beats of their own due to automaticity at a slower rate. This is known as idioventricular rhythm. See the rate here is slow and but is regular. This is wide QRS complexes, bizarre, with more than 0 0.12 seconds. The P wave may be absent or unrelated to the QRS or may be buried in the QRS. So this was the ECG 
finding for the idioventricular rhythm. So how the ventricular signals are transmitted? The ventricular signals are transmitted from cell to cell between the cardiomyocytes, not by the conduction system. So what's the rate in idioventricular rhythm? The rate usually is between 20 to 40 beats a minute and is due to the intrinsic automaticity of the ventricular myocardium. The rate may be as low as 15 beats a minute also. So on what factor the rate depends? The rate depends on the site of the block. So where is the block? It may be the AV block, AV nodal block or an infranodal block. In AV nodal block, the rate is about 40 beats a minute. But in infranodal block, the rate may be as low as 15 beats a minute. So if the rate is slower, then it's infranodal. So this is the ECG and I tell you the rhythm is regular, no P wave or absent or buried or unrelated, wide bizarre QRS complexes with more than 0.12 seconds in duration. When does it occur? What conditions? It occurs in end stage cardiac disease and or is associated with reperfusion of the cardiac tissue in acute myocardial infarction when treated with thrombolytic drugs. So these are the ECGs for the idioventricular rhythm, regular, slow, wide, bizarre QRS. And what is accelerated idioventricular rhythm? Accelerated idioventricular rhythm is when the rate is between 40 to 100 beats a minute. With the ventricular idioventricular rhythm, the rate was between 20 to 40. But accelerated rhythm, it is more than 40 to 100 and is due to ventricular ectopics here. The rate is faster here than the idioventricular rhythm. The accelerated idioventricular rhythm is a form of ventricular tachycardia and this occurs in acute MI and digitalis toxicity. When it occurs with the reperfusion therapy with thrombolytics, what does it mean? It means the treatment with the reperfusion drugs is successful. So what's the difference between the VTAC and the accelerated idioventricular rhythm. It's a difference of the rate. Here the rate, the maximum rate is 100 compared to the VTAC. So this is also a accelerated idioventricular rhythm and this one too down here. 